you guys for coming out today. Uh, big day uh, for Cowboy Nation uh, as we continue <laughs> to bring our staff together and uh, National Signing Day for our student athletes as, as well. And so I'll, I'll start off uh, in talking about some of our signees uh, from a coaching staff standpoint and uh, kind of formally introduce those guys to you and give you a chance uh, post uh, the conference uh, talking about uh, to visit with them as well. I'll make those guys available for you uh, to visit with at least the three coordinators. Um, our, our offensive coordinator, we're proud to announce uh, formerly Coach Ronnie Leston. Uh, we're excited about him. He comes to us from Colorado State. Uh, with an extensive background in quarterback development. Uh, was a part of uh, those early days at, at Ole Miss under David Cutcliffe uh, and those guys during that time uh, in the latter years of, of Eli and some of the great quarterbacks they had during that tenure. Uh, have tracked his career from early from Jacksonville State and beyond and a job that he has done and we're excited to have him as our quarterback coach and offensive coordinator. Defensively, uh, we bring in Grady Brown. He comes to us most recently uh, from OD, ODU, Old Dominion, uh, where he served in the capacity as the coordinator there, the co-coordinator there with that defense. Uh, and they're really good. We got a chance to, to meet them up close and personal uh, a year ago. And uh, what an outstanding job he did with that unit. We're excited about him. Our many years in the SEC was, we were together at L LSU uh, years ago. And then, of course, he was with uh, Coach Holtz at, at South Carolina and many other stops in between uh, with Coach Grady Brown. Special teams, uh, Coach Gary Hyman uh, comes to us uh, most recently from UTSA. We serve together uh, in San Antonio, but went against it uh, for, for years uh, prior to that when he was the uh, assistant special teams guy at Texas A&M and just really studied and watched him in his years at Kansas and other places throughout uh, major college football and was a tremendous attribute for us uh, a year ago, uh, two years ago and uh, at, at UTSA and excited to have him head up our special teams. Uh, we've got a couple other full-time guys that we've uh, brought with us. Uh, Coach Landon uh, Hofer, who's been with us already. He is the one guy that uh, stood out. Uh, his ability um, to communicate effectively with student athletes is persistence, his diligence, uh, his commitment to this university. He loves Magnet State University, and uh, he was a guy that uh, didn't ask to, to stay, but his, his work, his style of work displayed his eagerness, his willingness to be a part of this, uh, this program, and we're glad to continue to have him uh, with us. Uh, from our defensive back, corners coach will be Coach Darren Wilson. Darren Wilson comes to us from UTSA, uh, where he coached our corners, he was the same in that capacity here, an outstanding teacher, uh, an outstanding football coach, and we're thrilled to have him as well. Linebacker coach Will Thomas comes with us as well from UTSA in uh, early years at, at, at uh, LSU, and has been with us for several years since the 2013 year, so he continues to be a part of the fiber of our of our defense and has been steady in his growth process. We're excited to have him as our linebacker coach. Uh, coach Blaine Gauthier, uh, some of you guys may remember uh, Blaine Gauthier, outstanding quarterback at Lutcher High School, got him to the state championship, went on to play stellar at UL Lafayette, uh, joined our staff 14 or so uh, at LSU and has still been there the, the last several years serving in the capacity as assistant wide receiver coach and uh, was a big contributor uh, to the success that they had in their national championship run. And so those are the on the field guys that we have right now with our staff. Uh, in the very near future, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up um, our staff um, in, in totality. And so we'll have our full staff here in short order uh, for you. Um, as far as our signing class, um, 12 guys. Uh, in the early period, we, we signed seven. Uh, right now, in the traditional period, the traditional February signing period, we've signed five. And it gives us a total of uh, 12 guys in this year's signing class. Uh, a huge emphasis uh, for us was to, uh, to get back home, to make an emphasis in the state of Louisiana. 
and uh, to have young men from St. Thomas More, to have young men from Helen Cox High School in New Orleans, uh, to be able to get young men from Catholic of Baton Rouge, uh, guys with uh, Louisiana backgrounds uh, like Quad Wilson. And so uh, it was important for us to recognize and wrap our arms around the great state of Louisiana and the quality players that we have, the quality coaching that we have. And I think we've addressed some of those needs there. And that gives us uh, our 12 guys. Offensively, uh, we picked up five guys. Defensively, we picked up seven. From a geographic standpoint, uh, five guys from the great state of Louisiana, five from Texas, one from Kansas, and one from Missouri. That leaves us nine uh, to 10 scholarships that we'll carry into the spring. And what we wanted to do is uh, really take our time and really be diligent and pay attention to the things and the needs of our football team and not just take uh, bodies to take bodies, uh, but to look at the attrition that has just happened with our team with graduation or anticipated graduation uh, with guys who have may, may have been injured and disqualified and, or may not be with us. Uh, and for whatever reason, uh, we have needs to be met. And so to pay attention and um, be responsible to our roster and our roster management was critical for us. And so we'll take those handful of uh, scholarship opportunities into the spring. Uh, some may still be used on, on a high school guy. Uh, there will be some emphasis at some positions uh, in the transfer portal, and some may even go in the direction of a junior college guy. Uh, but we will find the best fit that are program fit for Magnet State University, and that will be our, our charge to get those young men that gives us our greatest opportunity to win and to win right now. Okay. Uh, any questions? Uh, I'd like to open the floor up to, to answer any questions about signing day and in the direction where we head. Um, yeah, you uh, you, said you got nine or ten to, to take into the spring. Yeah. Um, how hard will you be looking at the uh, transfers and that whole protocol now? Yeah, you know, we, we, we're doing it now. And so what happens with a lot of those guys uh, at certain positions, they go through a spring. All right, so if they're still in a portal, that means they're probably not available right now. Uh, and they're in competition in, in some cases. And so we allow it to run its natural course and we position ourselves because they're in the portal to be able to communicate with those guys. And we establish a, a relationship with them and we'll court them, we'll recruit them. Um, and then at the appropriate time, be able to get them on our campus and hopefully secure them if, they're, um, if their agreement is in the same with ours, that this is the place for them. You're almost a month into being head coach at McNeese. How's it been <clears throat> just kind of getting to know the players that are on campus, uh, setting, your <clears throat> setting your expectations for the program? Just how's it been just being the coach for the fr uh, first month? Busy, nonstop, and so uh, that was our very first charge. Before we could go out and start recruiting uh, high school student athletes uh, that are or, or, or PSAs at this time, we needed to recruit our very own team, and there was uh, there was some instability there. I'm their third coach in three years, and so we need to give them we needed to give them reassurance. We needed to give them an, an understanding of what has happened. Uh, and what's about to happen, and, and just reassurance that uh, you're in good hands. We're steady, we're stable, uh, and we're gonna build this thing uh, the way that it's always been. Uh, we're not trying to recreate something that has never been before. Uh, my predecessors have been outstanding in their ability to make this an elite program. Uh, and so I'm not trying to build something that hasn't been done before. It's been done before at a very high level consistently for many years. And so to get back again, as I said before, to our winning ways, our standard, our culture, uh, is something that we've been charged with. And so to cultivate that yet again with our current student population, our current team was critical. And so there've been uh, team meetings, there've been individual meetings uh, with myself. And now that we have staff aboard, it's allowing those young men to meet with their position coach, as well as their coordinators to answer some questions they may have as well. Coach, let me uh, get you to address the, the most important position, which is quarterback. Um, going into spring and the next year, or even the, the, the year after, but in particular <coughs> this spring and the next season, um, what is your feeling on the quarterback situation, the depth 
you talked about roster and management. Yeah. Where are you on, on yeah. having that kind of youth in the background? Yeah, well, we're top heavy actually. We got one that's a freshman, and we got two that are seniors, uh, scholarship mm -hmm. quarterbacks. And so uh, we're actually uh, older with not enough parity uh, or equity within the quarterback room. Uh, we're going to probably take two. Um, in an ideal world, you'd like a, a veteran guy that can come in and compete uh, for the job, and you like a, a high school guy that ensures uh, the future of your program. And then a year from now, maybe even take another. Uh, but to have uh, a minimum of four, maybe five quarterbacks is our target number at the position group. Right now, we're at three with two being seniors and one a redshirt freshman. And so we have a lot of work to do at the quarterback uh, position. Uh, it's gotten our attention, we recognize it, uh, and we will address it. Is it as important to get one now as it was before when you consider you got, look at all the quarterbacks that <coughs> changed and had success on all levels. Isn't there an opportunity to get somebody like either through the portal or a kind of a bounce back? Yeah, I mean, those opportunities are, are always out there. Uh, we'll pursue them. We are pursuing them. Uh, but again, uh, the fit is, is everything, you know, to get a guy in who understands us, to understand team, uh, how many years of eligibility does he have? Um, is he a guy that has one? Or is he a guy that has two? Or is he a guy that's two for three? You know, things of that nature. And so all of that will play a part in it. Uh, I, you know, I like our guys that we have right now, but we don't have enough quality quantity uh, in the in the position room, just quite frankly. And so uh, we recognize <coughs> that, and uh, we will build healthy competition in that room, and we will build depth in that, in that room as well. well was it harder to recruit players or to get a staff first? Yeah, meaning our current or to get, to get your staff to get your staff. You're, you're doing you're yeah. basically recruiting kids at the same time yeah. you're recruiting a staff. Yeah, and so uh, even the boys and, and, and we aim high, you know, and we're not perfect by no means, and we've uh, we've missed the mark uh, in essence and in a sense on some of the coaching uh, opportunities because. Uh, the guys that we have not gotten have gone to uh, the National Football League or universities that uh, have separated themselves in, in other areas that we could not necessarily meet. But we, we've identified the right type of candidates. We've identified the right type of coaches that we want, as well as players. And can, when it came down even to today, uh, we try to meet the need at, at all of those. We recognize we need uh, another specialist that we needed a, a kicker to complement our punter who serves as a kickoff guy and as a place kicker as well to take some of the burden off of his legs. And so we've gone out and we've identified uh, those type of people. Uh, we will continue to recruit at a high level and not settle. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we're going to carry some over because uh, I think there are enough quality guys out there that we still need to get out and, and see and they need to be around us and we need to invite them on our campus and we need to go to their high school or their junior college or even to their homes and share with them who we are. And our greatest asset for our, our football program is our people. Uh, we have resources, we have things that we can offer, but our staff, our administration, uh, the people in this building uh, in the surrounding area uh, is our greatest asset. And when, when we can get student athletes and family around us, we feel that we'll be able to recruit at a very high level. With the seven players, mm -hmm. with the seven players that signed in December, obviously that was before uh, the previous coach <coughs> left and before you got here. What was the evaluation process with them? Were you always going to take them? Was there any possibility that any of them would have gotten released from their scholarship? Like, what was that process like? No, we embraced them. Uh, I think our, our previous staff did an outstanding job in recognizing those young men. Uh, from a talent pool perspective, I think they courted them and recruited them very well. We came in and we looked at a uh, film on all 12 of them, uh, I'm sorry, on all seven of them, and thought that they were certainly worthy uh, of the scholarship that was extended to them, and, uh, and we embraced them and, and fortunate to have them a part of our football team. Coach, I've seen a couple guys that are playing multiple sports. Was that a pretty big emphasis to get guys that have backgrounds playing different things other than football? You know, when we recruit them in high school, we, we look for that. The very first thing that happens, we start watching film, and the question is asked track times. Uh, baseball guy, uh, basketball guy, uh, what does he do? 
And, you know, I, I just believe uh, over many years of evaluating that guy who has that competitive edge, that guy who competes year round, uh, is a guy who generally goes to the forefront. And uh, we don't necessarily look for a guy who's just a football player. Uh, we're not looking for a guy who is a bodybuilder. We're looking for guy that, guys that have athleticism, guys that have speed and change of direction, and that can play in modern day football in space. That can make people miss, that can make tackles, that can make accurate throws, that can extend plays, uh, things of that nature. And generally your athlete is gonna be the guy that, that that's able to do that. And so uh, when we're recruiting them, it, it, there is an emphasis, there is that piece, that component that asks why. Why is he not involved in other sports? Uh, but it, it, it isn't a deal breaker. We don't recruit guys who don't, uh, if he only plays football, and we don't drop them uh, if they play multiple sports. Uh, but it, it, I think it is uh, an attribute that, uh, that that's a compliment of your better athletes. Um, how were you able with the uh, <clears throat> APR situation leading to the postseason ban uh, coming up at, later on this year? How were you able to discuss it with, you know, the kids that did sign uh, potential recruits, grad transfers, <clears throat> everything like that? Yeah, we met it head on, and so we didn't uh, we didn't duck, duck it, we didn't dodge it. Uh, we addressed it when we had those young men uh, on official visit. We walked out onto that field. Uh, we we stood in the middle of that logo. And uh, we pointed out the conference championships and the playoff appearances. And we gave view of the, uh, the stands where their parents would, would see them. Uh, and we said things to them like, uh, if you came to McNeese just to play football, you've made a mistake. That the degree matters. And one without the other is incomplete. And so we will uh, address this academic uh, piece that we have. Now, here's what our greatest issue was. We've had a retention issue that we've had a revolving door because we haven't had stability in the head coaching seat. We don't have a GPA issue or a accreditation issue where people are flunking out and our school is not up to standard, but because we've had uh, inconsistency in the head coach's chair, people have come and gone and we haven't done a good job of managing it. And so we'll be better there, we'll have stability. I'm, I'm here. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna have stability. We're gonna be accountable to one another, and we're gonna move forward. And sometimes the misconception is this APR issue is we have people flunking out that we we don't meet the standard for the curriculum as a university. And none of those are the issues. The issue is that uh, the inconsistency of the head coaching chair and people moving about. Uh, in the midst of transfers. And so their cohort that, that started within 16 and then it's measured in two year intervals, four year intervals, they're not grad start and graduation isn't coinciding. And then semesters are taken off or years are taken off and they're not here. So retention is another point. So you're going 0 for 2 when you don't necessarily need to. So just really need to, to, to get to the parents, to the student athlete, that our GPA was right at a 2.8 for our student athletes. Uh, it, it's as good as our student population. And so we, we do a good job. Those who stay, those who understand uh, the importance of it, uh, they have success. Uh, when they don't stay is when you have uh, the issues. We talked about, uh, I gave them an example uh, of, of our national championship team right here in our state that had nine guys uh, declare for the NFL draft. And the greatest example was I know one of the young men personally, he has a 3.8 and he's a junior uh, at, 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 at LSU and he's decided to go into the draft. Well, they're gonna lose two points with him. Right, not me, he's a 3.8, he's a great student, but he's not going back retention. He will not graduate with his class, another point. And so they'll lose points for him because he's not there. Um, and so that's the, that's the best sample I can give someone that uh, it really has nothing to do with our ability of our student athletes to learn or our teachers, faculty, administration and the things that we're doing. We just haven't had consistency that people have started and finished with their cohorts. Well, not to get into the weeds on that, but that's a good example. Would you, through your experience yeah. at that level, would you think that this NCAA <coughs> process or APR might have some 
some built-in issues for programs that lose players, either at the McNeese level for various reasons and at the, at the Power Five that you have no yeah. control over. Yeah, you, you don't. And so, you know, one of the things that we've incorporated here already is to position uh, our young men aggressively academically in, in the summer sessions or even in the fall sessions to, uh, and they're individually based to be quite frank with you. It, it depends on your ability uh, to balance um, your academics, your tutorials along with, with your sport and your social life. Uh, but what we did at other places when we had early entrant into the NFL draft, um, we just got on it very early and put them on pace to, to finish in three and a half years. So that now when school X beats you up and say, look at the APR, they're not graduating. You're right, they're not graduating, but it, it's not that they didn't graduate because they flunked out who's the third player taken in a draft was 50 million. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and so uh, you, there's ways strategically um, from an academic component that you can um, preserve the blunt of that, that, that blow and allow your team to have success as well as that young man not to have to negotiate. Should I stay or should I stay and graduate or should I opt to go early? And so we put them in position where, how about do both? Position yourself where you in three and a half years can earn this degree. And if you chose to go, whether it's the NFL or the portal, you got the best of both worlds. And so we've uh, mainstreamed, streamlined our academic component to give them that balance of academics and still maximizing their athletic potential. If you don't mind, get back back to the recruiting and the roster management. You mentioned the phrase "win now." We're recruiting yeah. to win now. Yeah. Win now for for 2020. Is there a, is there a position grouping, personnel grouping that right now you look at your board and says we outside of that quarterback that you discussed that we need <clears throat> we need to beef up some that we're going into the season a little bit on the light side when it comes to bodies and talent. Yeah, um, the talent part, we, we watch film. Uh, we had some guys we redshirted a year ago for whatever reason um, that we'll need to evaluate. But the guys uh, that are coming back, um, you know, when we talk about our receiver position, I think we have uh, two to three really quality guys that have shown the ability. I think our Rascal is as good a defensive lineman that there is in our conference. Um, and I think in totality, um, each position is evaluated individually. Uh, I think we have enough, but you can always have more. And so each group, I think we need to be, but I, I, I do think we need a couple of more receivers uh, that have playmaking ability. I think we need a couple, couple more defensive linemen that can come up there and wreck havoc. We, we have quantity uh, at the linebacker position, and I think we have guys that have potential there but they haven't really shown it yet. And so we're betting on potential and development of what will happen this fall. Uh, because from a, from a quantity standpoint, we have more than enough of up linebackers in that case. Uh, I think we have corners that are good as anyone else in the Southland Conference, uh, but I think we need more. And so uh, when you look at our roster um, and the attrition there or, or not, there's still room for growth for talented people to come in and buy for playing time and to compete uh, to get on the field early. Everybody so, wants to see if they have the next uh, Derek Stingley uh, in regards <laughs> to true freshman. Is there anybody uh, with the signees that you, you're bringing in either uh, December or February that that's Derek Stingley? Well, <laughs> he may be the best coin in America yeah, as a true freshman. But he might have a shot of, con uh, of contributing uh, this yeah. spring and August. Yeah, we. Uh, we think so. We, we, we think uh, we, we have a couple of young men that, uh, that we've been recruiting for at least two years that uh, give us a, the range, the speed, uh, the size at various positions that can come in and, and compete right away. Uh, they'll have to earn their way, uh, but we like them. We like the intangibles that they bring to the table uh, and certainly think that they will be in position. Again, our emphasis wasn't necessarily recruiting the guy who's the project that in three to four years he may be good enough. We, we're bringing guys in that, uh, that we think have the abilities, but they're, none of them are ready made now. They're, they don't come off the bus with an S on their chest and able to just go to the field. So there's 
There's, there's the identification, there's the recruitment, uh, and then there's the development once they get here. And so uh, some of it will fall on our shoulders as well to get them ready to play. And we accept that responsibility in developing these young men. Is there a name that, that you would like to <coughs> from this list? No. Okay. Coach, you see any differences in recruiting? Obviously, your first head coaching job, well, first coaching job at the FCS level. Do you see any difference in recruiting from the FBS level to this level? We really don't. You know, we, again, we, 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 we aim high. Uh, the guys that we're recruiting, um, we feel could have played for us at those other places, uh, various places at various times. And so we, we still go out and we look for a, a size speed ratio uh, that may not be a prototype, but for us is our program type that fits what we do and that will allow us to contend for the Southland Conference Championship. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.